evening, fellow Toastmasters, and thank you for those of you who have turned in after today's event. I am really excited to introduce our keynote today. Before I introduce them, here's a little bit of a tease of what to, you'll have to come expect. We have all experienced increased stress levels the past few years. Stress can affect everything from your decision-making abilities to, to your relationships, relationships with family and friends. It can even impact your Toastmaster clubs. With the ever-increasing number of stressors in our society, it's vital that we find ways to recharge and refresh ourselves. During this highly interactive presentation, you will not only get recharged and refreshed, but you will also discover methods of self-care that you will be able to immediately start using in your home, work, and Toastmasters lives to reduce the stress in your life. Please join me in silent applause and reaction applause to welcome my friend, my um, person I've known for 10 years, hard to believe, Kevin DeRozier, distinguished, to distinguished Toastmaster. <laughs> Yeah, before we get moving too much, I want to ask you a question. And I want you to answer this in chat, but let me explain it first. I want you to privately chat me something that you really love. Now, what I mean by that, and let's not put family and friends and significant others. We all love those. But an example, I really like cheesecake, but I wouldn't text that because I love creme brulee. I've never met a creme brulee I didn't like. I love photographing nature. For those of you that know me, I could go out all day long in the desert Southwest and just be photographing probably the rest of my life. But things you really, really love. So if you don't mind, if you would private chat me those, as many as you want, no judgment, it's private. If you love Justin Bieber, that's okay. I won't tell anybody. You could even say Nickelback, but which, whatever you want, just start private messaging me things that you like or love, not like. All right, have a lot of these coming in, fantastic. So what I am going to do here is I am going to selectively read some of these. I am not going to say who submitted it. If you also really love it, leave your camera on. If you do not love it, turn your camera off. And I will start with Playing golf. If you really love golf, keep your camera on. If you do not like it or love it, turn your camera off. And I'm in the Brady Bunch for you. I see a lot of cameras going off, but I see several staying on. Okay, that's a good start. Reading books. Who here likes to read books or loves to read books? I love to read books. My camera's staying on for sure. Okay. Dogs. Who loves dogs? My camera's staying on for that, definitely. Okay, I didn't see it, but as long as I have dogs, I am gonna say cats as well. Who loves cats? And my camera just went off. I'm not a cat lover. Hopefully you don't hold that against me and I haven't <laughs> alienated half the audience here. But I see we have a lot of cat lovers too. Ah, here's an interesting one. Who likes creating? I should see a lot of cameras go on for this. We create our speeches. We create a lot through Toastmasters. Okay, very good. And I know some of you cannot put your camera on because of bandwidth. I, I get that and thank you for texting that in there. That, that is a problem with Zoom a lot. Oh, ice cream. Oh, I, I've got to stay on for ice cream. Who loves ice cream? Okay, we'll do two more. Let's see. Mac and cheese. Who loves mac and cheese? <laughs> I hear some giggles. Okay. And the last one I'm going to ask, who loves having fun? I should see every camera on here. If you don't, you're in the wrong place. 
Okay, why did I start with that exercise? Why did we do that? Go ahead and unmute yourself and just give me an answer. Anybody? We need to make sure we keep those things in our life. Mm -hmm. Shows us what we have in common. It shows what we have in common. Great answer too. Icebreaker. Icebreaker. Very good. Got to get everyone to participate. To get everyone to participate, most yeah, definitely. Engaging. Yep. engaging. Okay, so what we did, well, let's, let's ask you this. Who has ever had to present virtually? Raise your hand. I think most of us have because of Zoom and COVID. We've all had to do that. Now, how many of you are tired of presenting to blank screens where everybody doesn't have their picture up? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I love to see pictures. I feed off the audience, and I would think you would as well. We all feed off of human interaction. So there were two things I noticed, too. When your cameras were going off and on, I saw a lot of smiles. I think that I made several of you happy, or you made yourself happy. And that's what this is about, is being happy, recharging and refreshing. And that's one way to recharge and refresh, to be happy. So throughout this presentation, it will be interactive in many parts of it. You are going to be playing some games. You're going to be laughing at yourself, but that is a way to recharge and refresh. This isn't going to be a heavy presentation because I want you to be able to just relax and enjoy yourself today. So that's where we're going to go. Now, has anybody read this book? And I will get this a little bit closer. Maybe you can see the title. But it is by Sean Accor, and it's called The Happiness Advantage. And one thing that Sean talks about in this book, and in a nutshell, it says, happy people are more successful. And this book teaches you the habit of being happy or how to make being happy a habit. And Sean also says, we grew up looking at things backwards. We look at things where we say, if I'm successful, I'll be happy. But there's a problem with that. You get your first DTM. Are you happy? No, you usually say, I want a second DTM. Or if I get that promotion at work, you're happy for the moment, but you want that next promotion and that next promotion. We always keep moving the goalposts. So are you really, truly going to be happy? What Sean says in this book is to be successful, you should be happy first. So if I am happy, I will be successful. So let's use an example of this. When you're happy, dopamine and serotonin flow in your brain. And scientific studies have shown that this opens up your brain. And it's kind of like a box. So if you have a box with two flaps at the top, when they're closed, the dopamine and serotonin aren't flowing. But when you are happy and those are flowing, it opens up your mind. You start to recall information you have stored more readily. You also learn more readily. And that way you absorb even more. But this goes even deeper. There have been scientific studies that show this. And let's start with this question. How many of you have children? Raise your hand. A lot of you. Have you ever scolded them in some way and been, I, would, I don't want to say yelling, but you've raised your voice at them and you've forgotten their name. You've called them by the wrong name, especially if you have multiple children. Why did that happen? It's because you weren't happy and you have trouble reaching into your mind and grabbing those things that are important. But if you're happy, you're able to grab the things that you remember a lot better. And you know what? You named your children. You should know their name better than anybody else. It's not like it's something that's obscure, but if it's obscure, you, obscure, you should know it. But I want to give you three data-driven examples because that's just kind of happenstance. And one example Sean's book says is that salespeople are 37% more likely to make a sale when they are happy. Not when the customer is happy, but when the salesperson is happy. Now let's look at how this can affect you. 
when you have a guest at a Toastmasters meeting, when you go up and talk to them after the meeting and see how they like the meeting, see if they're interested in Toastmasters, see if they would maybe join, are you preoccupied with where you have to be right after that meeting? Are you thinking about what was happening in the meeting? Are you your most happy self? Maybe you need to pause, take a deep breath, and get in that happier mood. So when you talk to that potential member, you have a 37% better chance of converting them to a member. Same with officers, getting people to become a club officer. Are you happy when you're talking to them or are you doing it because you have to? I need to find someone to fill this job. You want to make sure when you do things that you are as happy as possible. And this book will talk about that. Customer service ratings go up 57 or 50% 50 when people are happy. Because when you're happy, you handle objections better. So when your club members have an issue with what's going on in the club, and you can't always say, I'm going to be in a happy mood for this, but you can learn with time to become happier throughout the day. And lastly, this example really struck me. Did you know? that studies have shown that doctors are 19% faster and more accurate in diagnosing you when they are happy. Mm. Have you ever been into a doctor when they are in a horrible mood? I have, I know that. And when I have health problems, I want the best possible care. So maybe one of the things you're looking for in a doctor is a doctor that is happy, somebody that is in a good mood. On any day, given day when you're not in a positive mood, you're gonna be far less efficient. And we can't guarantee we'll be in a hard mood, in a happy mood, but you need to find ways to refresh and recharge or recharge and refresh. And you know, happiness is contagious. When you're happy, other people around you are happy and everybody is more effective. So let's try to foster that happiness in our Toastmasters Club as well. Now, there are three things I'd like to add as bonus materials, and Sarah is going to put these in the chat, so you don't have to write these down. Just make sure you save the chat after this. But if you're intrigued and want to learn more, the first thing to do is watch a YouTube video by Sean Accor on the happiness advantage. And he delves into this. He gives you a great example of why to be happy and tells you a little bit on how to be happier. And Sarah will put that link into the, in the chat. Also, if you want to go to level two, buy Sean's book. I don't make anything from this. That's not my affiliate link. That is just a link to Amazon. And you can get his book from Amazon. And third, Yale University has a course called The Science of Well-Being. Best of all, it's free. It's a free course from Yale University. Now, it's a 10-week course. You have to invest a little bit of your time. But wouldn't it be nice to tell your friends, I studied at Yale? <laughs> it would. I'd love to be able to tell my friends I studied at Yale. I'm signing up for the course. I just did, as a matter of fact. Okay, I told you we'd play some games. Let's get back into another game. And I call this the count game. And here's what we're going to do. I'm going to start, and you're going to follow me and do this in a few minutes, but I'm going to go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. I will do that twice. Then after I finish that twice, I'm going to go two, three, four. Two, three, four. Next, I'll go three, four. Three, four. Four, four, four. Then the last time, and hands down, without saying anything. So we will go through that sequence twice. The first time, we will do it at a fairly slow pace, like I just did there. 
and then I will speed that up. I ask that you turn off your microphones, but I want you to count out loud the one, two, three, four. We don't want to clutter everything, so make sure your microphones are all off. And follow with me. The one thing I ask is if you mess up, don't stop. Just keep going. Try to catch up and see where you're at, and let's see how this goes. So here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Three, four. Three, four. 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 Now we'll go faster. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Three, four. Three, four. 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 Okay. I know I messed up in there. How many of you messed up? Raise your hands. How many of you didn't mess up and are just fibbing to me to look good? Okay. Now we're going to try this a little bit different. Raise your virtual hand and I'm asking it to answer this question. Ask me this question. I'll call on you so we don't have people talking over you. What did you do when you messed up? Raise your virtual hand, then I'll call on you. Looking for an answer. Tammy. I laughed first. <laughs> All right. Okay, Maureen. I laughed also. Okay. Sharice. I laughed too, but then I made a face like, oops. <laughs> okay. Did anybody do anything else? Okay. Uh, Rahul. Yeah, I laughed too, but then I also wanted to wait to see how many others messed up. Okay. And Maureen again, your hands up? Or is or, that from but, before? Yes, I um, definitely started all over. Once I messed up, it was just like, okay, start over. <laughs> okay. Well, first of all, give yourselves a round of applause. You did a great job in that. Now, most people will say that laughed, and that's what I wanted to hear, that you laughed and you kept going. How many of you did laugh? Raise your hand. Looks like everybody laughed when they messed up. And I can only see 49 of you on my screen, so I can't see everybody. But it looks like most, if not all, of you laughed. And that's what I was hoping you'd say. Because when we make a mistake in life, we want to be able to laugh. And what I also wanted to hear, but I didn't hear, is you kept going. And I saw that on the screen. People kept going even when they messed up. And that's what I'd asked you to do. So what lesson is that? Well, everything we do in life, we make mistakes. And the best thing you can do is to laugh and keep going. When you make a mistake and you say something to your friends, and if I go to Joe and I say, Joe, I messed up. What does your friend normally do? Kevin, you know, it really wasn't that bad. Just, you know, get back in there and keep moving. And that, but do you do that for yourself? Do you tell yourself, hey, you messed up, but you know what? Let's get back in there and go forward. We don't do that. Make sure that you laugh and forgive yourself. And another good way to do this too is talk to yourself. Now, don't do it in front of someone else, but I may just go in, in front of a mirror after I make a big mistake and say, Kevin, why did you do that? But you know what? It's not the end of the world. If you do this, this, and this, you'll recover and just move on. Maybe that's an apology. Maybe that's correcting something that you messed up. But make sure you're not that hard on yourself. We're always good to other people, but we never take the time to do that for ourselves. You know, we're always told our entire lives, treat others the way you would like to be treated. I would like to flip that. Treat yourself the way you would treat everyone else. Make sure you are treating yourself well and you will be able to recharge and refresh a lot better. 
Now this next game we're going to play is a little bit difficult. I've never done it with more than about 20 people on the screen. And I am gonna base it just on the front screen. I only have 49 people, so I can't see everybody. And we probably all see different people on our front screen, depending when they came on and off. But I am gonna ask everybody to use the emojis. Down at the bottom, you'll see reactions. And if you click on reactions, there are six emojis I would like you to use, one of those six. Either the hand clap, the thumb up, the crying, the oh, no, round mouth face, the heart, or the party thing. I, I don't know what to call that. So I am gonna count to three. I'm gonna go one, two, three, and I will have each of you click on one of those six emojis. Now here's what we are aiming for. We are aiming for everybody on my main screen to have the same emoji. So I will go one, two, three, you'll click on an emoji. Then if I don't see everybody the same, I'll say one, two, three again. And we're gonna keep doing that until we get everybody on the same emoji. Now I may stop a few minutes early. I've never tried it with this, but I've always had a group that's done it when it's 20 or so. And I believe in you, your Toastmasters are great people. So please, at the count of three, click on an emoji and we're just gonna keep going. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, click on an emoji, one, two, three, click. So one, two, three, emoji. 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 And keep changing if you want or stay the same, it's up to you but we're trying to match. One, two, three, emoji. 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 Okay, we're gonna stop there. On my screen, a good percentage of the people have the thumbs up emoji. A few more have the flat hand. I guess that would be the hands, uh, like applause. And I, I wish we had got it to work, but let's ask strategy. So once again, raise your hand. What was your strategy in this on why you did what you did? Okay. Vi? Or is that your hand raised or let's see. Uh, Natanya, what was your yeah, strategy? I left my emoji up for a while for a couple rounds and then I picked what the next biggest group was on my screen. And then okay. I started browsing through the other, like I have three pages of people who have their video up. Okay. Uh, Ran? Tammy? I was similar. I First, I was going to use just the first emoji and keep using that. But then I saw the majority and I followed the majority. Then I switched to what you were doing. So I thought, well, if everybody watches you, then <laughs> maybe we, we would all get be in sync. <laughs> it didn't work. <laughs> okay. Uh, Kathy. That's exactly what I did too. Okay. I started off with the sparkles and then I saw what you were doing. So I thought, well, if it's got to be the same, it'd be the same as you. <laughs> okay. Very good. And we'll ask one more, uh, Terry. Yeah, I did the one that was the quickest and the easiest because it was the very beginning. And the first thing I could click on, and I just kept clicking on that because I didn't want to do, I don't like games. So Okay. <laughs> and, and some of the other answers I've had, people will do what a friend did, or they'll go with the majority. We heard that. But in Toastmasters, we're not only communicators, 
we're leaders. So some of us, because of that leadership tendency in us, did not follow the group to try to get consensus because we want to go in that direction we feel strongly about. So in some cases, you aren't going to be able to get that consensus because we have some people that are not going to change easily. And it takes a little bit more than 15 or 20 rounds of something to get them to join the consensus. So just keep that in mind when you're trying to get consensus in your club. It's not always going to happen, but you need to try. But I'd like to circle back about making mistakes. We talked about that a little bit earlier. When you make mistakes, do you ask for help? And just raise your hand if you ask for help when you make mistakes, you ask somebody for help. Okay, a lot of you do, and that's good. And that's another great thing about Toastmasters. We have mentors, we have people that will help. But why don't you ask for help sometimes? And I'd like you to put that in chat and put that in chat for everybody, not just me. Why would you not ask for help sometimes? If you could put that in chat. Embarrassed, that's a very good answer. Pride, been there, stubborn, oh, that's me. Okay, feel weak, okay. Ego, pride, okay, a lot of pride, a lot of insecurity. I, yeah, definitely, and that. But you know what? Harvard research says that when you ask somebody for help, they actually like you and respect you more. So maybe in our clubs, we ask our club members for help. Are you having troubles with membership? Are you having troubles filling roles? Maybe we ask our club members, instead of just saying, well, this is an officer's problem. We need to talk about this. We need to figure this out. Maybe we open it up to everybody in membership. Maybe we ask that guest, you know, if you could give us a suggestion on how to get a little bit better in our meeting, what would you suggest? What would make it a little bit better of an experience for you? When you ask for help, people actually will like you more and trust you more. So remember that, ask for help. So what did we do today? First and foremost, hopefully we had fun. Most of this was highly interactive so I could engage you. And maybe you learned a few ways you can utilize Zoom in your own Zoom meetings and have a little bit more fun when you do that. But maybe it just gave you a chance to sit back, relax, and not think too deeply. Those of you that know me know that I almost always end my presentations with a challenge. But before I give you that challenge, I wanna tell you something that I realized this morning as I was preparing for this. This is the third time I've delivered a keynote for TLI. The very first time was on June 12th, 2009. That was my future mother and father-in-law's 50th wedding anniversary. That was also the day I went straight from TLI, drove to Kansas City, proposed to my now wife, and made them my official mother-in-law and father-in-law. <laughs> Today, December 10th, is my mom's 93rd birthday. So I will be going to see her after this. But for some reason, I get asked to speak at TLI on momentous days. So if I ever get asked again, maybe it will be another momentous day in my life. And I'm thankful for that. So here's my challenge to you. I have three challenges. First of all, we need to reverse the happiness formula to see what our brains are really capable of. Be happy so you can be successful. Second, there are some links in chat that Sarah put out there for you before. Sarah, if you still have them available, would you put them back out there? But I challenge you to at least listen to the TED Talk on the happiness advantage. If you like that, go to level two, read the book. And if you really want to become more happy in life and become more successful, take that free course at Yale and tell me 
someday that you took courses at Yale. And last but not least, I challenge you to recharge and refresh through happiness. Sarah. Thank you, Kevin. I just put into chat yet again our uh, links, um, a Word document with his links, so you can just download it and save it. Kevin, you did a tremendous job. I, I definitely feel refreshed and recharged because I was really feeling very stressful this morning, so I can definitely feel like I got some weight off my shoulders. Um, and I know on behalf of the planning committee, we greatly appreciate you giving time, especially on the momentous occasion of your mother's 93rd birthday. So we appreciate that. At this time, I just wanted to open it up for any questions you guys have for Kevin after his speech. I know one question that came to mind, um, I, I was kind of curious, Kevin, have you taken the Yale course and what's the biggest thing you learned from it? And I know Darlene mentioned in chat she had taken it too. I just signed up for it. So I right. don't know what's to come yet. I will find out. No, that's all right. And I think Maureen has her hand up. Yeah. I do. Kevin, when do you want to come to Toast a Woo meeting? We meet on Zoom currently, but I think it would be great for you to come and talk about ways and all that happiness it would be good maybe february when around valentine's day or something that would be fun I, i'm open to visiting all kinds of toastmasters clubs when i was working i'm retired now but when i would work and i would travel a lot for work i would look up toastmasters clubs in the towns i was in i i've been at toastmasters meetings in toronto canada in Montreal, Canada, and they spoke English for me. Uh, in Belgium, they practiced their English for me in Belgium when I was over in Belgium. Uh, several cities in the United States, Newark, New Jersey, where Anheuser-Busch had breweries, that's where I worked, uh, Fort Collins, Colorado. So I always love to go to Toastmasters meeting because everyone's a little bit different. And I'd, if it fits in my calendar, I'd love to attend yours. So when you were in awesome. New Jersey, did they speak English there too? <laughs> no, they spoke Joyzy. Okay. <laughs> And Andrew, I just had someone put in chat, um, maybe after your 10 week course, maybe we can do a webinar of what you learned from Yale, you know, teach us, you know, about it. For those of you, for those of you who can't do the 10 year, 10 week, 10 year, oh my gosh, <laughs> 10 week <laughs> commitment, you know, you can uh, share your knowledge. I see the next hand up we have to say in organized fashion is Charisse. Do you have a question for her, Kevin? And Charisse, you're on mute. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. Thank you for your presentation. I wanted to ask, um, I know that you stayed within our theme and we appreciate that, but this particular book that you used for your presentation, um, <clears throat> is it called The Happiness Factor? Yes, The Happiness Advantage. The Happiness Advantage. By Sean Acor I, yeah, I, I got my copy at Half Price Books. I'm sure that he's on Amazon as well. I, I live to, right next to a half price books and they had it. So that's where I got my copy when I got it. I wanted to ask how this, because obviously you like this book. So how has this factor helped change your, your life? It's made me appreciate the things in life more and make a conscious effort to be happy. You know, we have a choice when how we react to different things and we can react in a negative way or we can react in a positive way. And it's, taught me to look at things in a more positive way. I, I don't like being called the devil's advocate because if you're the devil's advocate, a lot of times you think you're helping things, but a lot of times you're really the problem. And this taught me that maybe sometimes I was the problem. And some of you that have known me for years know that I've been a problem before. <laughs> and Elaine's you. laughing, so she knows. <laughs> I love you, Elaine. <laughs> And Kevin, we had a couple questions in chat. Uh, Richard Porter wrote, wrote, what's your favorite thing um, from researching about happiness? I, I, you know, my favorite thing is it's not that hard and how it's changed my life when I just focus on the positive on things and how the other people around me follow suit. When I start 
making a conscious effort to look at the positive in things instead of the negative, I find myself being less and less of those conversations, the water cooler conversations, I call it, where we're just standing around there complaining about everything. I, I'm having less of those conversations with people in my life or people are initiating less of those conversations around me. So I, to me, it's just a huge win not having to dwell on the negative as much. You know, the other thing I did is I have not watched TV news since I retired April 13th of 2018. That was one of the most negative forces in my life, that and listening to talk radio. I don't do that anymore. Uh, you know, I still read things in the newspaper, but I try to avoid the things that are designed to inflame me and to get me riled up and mad at a certain group of people. You know, I, I, I could be mad at people that think conservatively. I could be mad at people that think uh, liberally. You know, it, it, it always tells me what's wrong with the other person, not what we're doing right and trying to make things better. Thanks, Kevin. So the questions are starting to come in now. So we'll start with the hands up and then we'll go back to chat um, and feel free to go either route for those of you um, listening in today. Raul, go ahead and ask your question to Kevin. Thank you, Sarah. And Kevin, what a wonderful keynote. Thank you so much. Quick question on happiness, since that was the core topic. How would you link happiness with mindfulness? And how would that combination translate into success? And then how would you define success looking back at mindfulness? I, I think they, they mesh together, happiness and mindfulness. And I think mindfulness is part of happiness. I, I think you can't have one without the other. So they are intertwined. And for me, you want what I would be success, just that I'm happy in life, that I enjoy what I'm doing. I wake up every morning with a reason to wake up. I'm learning new things every day. I, I just started learning how to do magic tricks so I can entertain my grandchildren and my friends. You know, just looking at the positive things, instead of waking up and complaining about everything that's going on in the world, I find things I enjoy and I go out and do those. So success for me or happiness for me is just going out there and finding things that I enjoy and can be happy doing. Thank you, Kevin. Great question, Raul. Uh, the next question for you, uh, Kevin, which is quickly turning into some table topics for you. Um, I, let's see here. I lost my place. Um, what is the author's name of the book, Researching Happiness? The Happiness Advantage is Sean, S-H-A-W-N, Accor, and that's how I say it. I don't know how you really say it, but A-C-H-O-R. Interesting. I wouldn't have spelled it that way. <laughs> Pardon? I said I wouldn't have spelled it that way. You know how it sounds, but but it should be in the links as well too. But his his uh, TED talk is great. It's it's twelve minutes of your life. It is twelve minutes, twelve or thirteen, very well spent. I waste that much time playing hearts on my cell phone. <laughs> Uh, the next question we have, so obviously for those of you in the audience, um, Kevin has written his first book. Uh, Paula Williams wrote, wrote, do you think you'll write a book on happiness too? I don't know that I'll, I'll write a book on happiness. The book I wrote was in honor of my parents and, uh, you know, I'm happy I wrote it. And, you know, for me, I, I'm not worried about if I sell any more copies. True story about my book. I was in uh, Circle K one morning, and it's one I go into every morning after exercising. And most of the people there had bought a copy of my book, and I'm filling up my soda. And don't lecture me on diet soda; I know it's bad. But this one woman that just started working there, a new cashier, walks up to me. She's just staring at me. I look at her. I said, "Excuse me, can I help you?" And she said, "You know, the manager, I struggle with suicidal thoughts, and the manager thought your book would help me. He lent it to me. I just wanted to thank you. I'm." couple chapters in and it's helping already. Uh, that's worth more than any money I'll make selling my book. Uh, that right there made the book worthwhile. I went out to my car, got a copy, signed it for her, gave it to her. And, you know, just to be able to make a difference in someone's life, just, yeah. But I'm probably not going to write another book. Uh, this one fulfilled the need. It was in honor of my parents. I got it out before, while my parents were still alive. And 
you know, everything after that, you know, I'm focusing on other things right now. I still need to learn to play the guitar. That's on my wish list too. I have the guitar, but I don't know how to play it yet. Hey, start small, you know, Mary Had a Little Lamb, you know, simple little songs, you know, it doesn't have to be, you know, overnight, you know, some of those rock songs. So uh, probably a really good transition, you know, from your book and that Circle K event. Um, Sam Close, hopefully I'm pronouncing your last name correctly. Um, he, he wrote, how do you help or support people who seem to be stuck in negative thinking? And I think that's a challenge of where all of our clubs are, right? Well, not, not that we're all stuck in negative thinking, but we're at half time. And it's time for us to try to overcome membership loss as well as just personal negativeness. What would your, what would your advice for us? Yeah, so for me, I, I'll start just steering the conversation with them to happier things and trying to get it off of there and not give them more fuel. If it's a member of a club and I'm an officer and all my clubs, it's a little bit easier for me to do. I will go to a fellow officer and say, hey, when they start talking negative, let's both go over there and start steering the conversation to something positive and that. So I'll enlist some help as well, because sometimes just one person can't do it you need some help so i would enlist other people to start steering conversations positive and eventually most people will get the message there's some people that no matter what you say uh they're going to be negative and those are the people i try to avoid in my life i, I hate to say that but i don't want to be around people that all they talk about is negative things there is one question in here that i do want to address i saw in chat and uh, how has Toastmasters affected your happiness? And, and I will tell you, I've made some of the best friends in my life in Toastmasters. And that I, I know a large percentage of the people that are here on this call today. And I've interacted with you inside of Toastmasters and outside of Toastmasters. And it's just amazing the, the big hearts that the people in Toastmasters have. When I've been down and needed help, they reach out and they help. Uh, that, that it's just an amazing group of people. So for me, it's the camaraderie. It's the friendship, the type of friendship that you don't get too many places. So Toastmasters has helped in that way uh, time and time again. Great. Well, um, is there any other questions for Kevin while we have his full attention on us? <laughs> I don't see any more, but um, again, I can't stress enough, Kevin, I took a lot of, out of this. I'm going to have to check out your book, Bridge Over Adversity. I know that um, Natanya Martin, she put the link in um, into the chat from Amazon. It sounds like it would be really helpful. And um, I, I can tell from the comments we have, a lot of people enjoyed your speech, and um, we can't wait to hopefully have you back in the future and uh, learn what momentous, uh, what milestone event is happening at the same time. It's surprising that it happens, but thank you for giving your time with us and um, being here with us today, and we greatly appreciate it. Um, and we'll take uh, what we will do now is we will take five minutes as a break um, at uh, 10 minutes till 11. We will start the next uh, what we're calling a passive aggressive bingo game, um, which you know, we're, <laughs> again, we're, we're trying to just learn it as we go, uh, Jackie and I, and the slides are just too quiet. So um, I, I'm this is all Jackie's. Cam Blackard's idea. Um, I'm just kind of helping the, the logistics of the day. Um, we'll do the next game at that time um, at, from 10.50 to 11. For those of you who are, who are just joining us, um, we just finished our keynote with Kevin DeRosier, um, which was uh, Refresh and Renew. Uh, if you're joining us, if you're attending the next sessions um, and you're attending an officer session, make sure you add after your name, your club, um, so that way we can make sure you get credit. We would greatly appreciate it. Please tune back with us in four minutes for our next passive aggressive bingo game. And um, you can join your uh, break room at any time for the 11 o'clock section courses. So you, the, all the breakout rooms are open. 
but we will only have people instructing in the 11 o'clock at this time. Enjoy your three minutes of break and then uh, we'll start the game. Otherwise, you can take an elongated break um, till 11 for our next class. See you guys soon. Thank you, Kevin, again. Round of applause. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, hey, Sarah. Yes, I'm on mute. Hey, what can we meet real quick in the staff room? In the staff room, of yeah. course. Yeah. Do you want to end the recording? Oh, thank you. <laughs> 